In 3.6, we look at how to solve inequalities, polynomials and rationals. In order to do this, we have to start by making the inequality have 0 on one side. Then we're going to replace the inequality with an equal sign and solve, factoring probably. Um, ignore that page 5 part. Um, these answers are called boundary points. We'll put them on a number line as open or closed dots. Then we need to check each section in the original problem, check a number from each section in the original problem. If it works, we'll shade it. If it doesn't, we'll leave it blank. And then we'll write our answer in interval notation. So first thing we want to do is to move everything onto one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x and subtract 4 from both sides. So that leaves me with x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is greater than 0. So I want to solve this next step with as if it was really an equal sign right here. This is four terms, so I'm going to factor it by grouping. So I'll take an x squared out of the first two and a negative 4 out of the second two. And then I write this pair that matches once in what's left in the other parentheses. And then this x minus x squared minus 4 still factors as a difference of squares. I want to set each one of those factors equal to zero. So this one gives me x equals negative one, this one gives me x equals negative two, and this gives me x equals two. So I'm going to put those on a number line in number order. So I have, now let's talk about whether it's an open dot or a closed dot. This sign doesn't have an equal sign below it. Remember that means it's a parenthesis, or instead of a parenthesis, we're going to do an open dot. So an open dot at negative 2, open dot at negative 1, and an open dot at 2. So now we just have to see that this breaks our number line into three, four pieces. There's a piece right here, there's a piece right here. There's a piece right here, and there's a piece over here. Number line doesn't stop at 2, right? It keeps going. There's a negative 3 on this side, and there's a 3 on this side. So we need to choose a number in each of those spots. So let me uh, make some room. So I've got my number line redrawn. We just need to start in um, one of these four sections. So let's start in this section right here. You can choose any x value from that section, and let's say I just choose negative 3. So I'm going to put that negative 3 back into the original problem. And I want to see if it's true when I have a negative 3 in there. So negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. Negative 3 squared is 9. Make sure you're careful with your parentheses. So negative 27 plus 9 is negative 18. And we're trying to see, is that bigger than negative 8? And by bigger, we mean further to the right on the number line. This is no, so we just want to leave that part of the number line blank. So now let's look at this part right here. This part right here, we have to choose something that's between negative 1 and negative 2. So maybe negative 1.5. It's a messy number, but you can use your calculator. We're trying to see if I put that in. Oops. Fix that. 4 times negative 1.5 put that in for x, do we get something that's true?
when I do the left side of my calculator, I get negative 1.125. I'm trying to see, is that bigger than the right side? On the right side, I get negative 2. Well, negative 1.125 is bigger than negative 2, so this is a yes. So I want to shade this part in between there. Now I want to choose something between 1 and 2. So 0 is a nice number. It's usually really easy to work with. Okay, so we have 0 cubed plus 0 squared, and we're trying to see, is that bigger than 4 times 0 plus 4? The left side is just 0, and the right side is 4, and that's a no, so we would leave that blank. And then finally, we'd want to choose something over here. Let's say maybe 3. So I would check 3 cubed plus 3 squared, and I want to see, is that bigger than 4 times 3 plus 4? The left side is 36. And the right side is 16, so that's a yes. So we'd want to shade this direction. Now that we've got this done, we need to go back and write it in the interval notation. So again, remember, we read the number line from left to right. The first number we get to is negative 2. It's not included. That's what that open circle meant. So we have a parenthesis. And then it stops at negative 1. And then we keep going, and the next spot we get to is 2, and that goes forever. Put a U between them, and here's our final answer. Let's look at another one. So again, we need to start by getting everything onto the same side. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 3. And then I want to solve this as if it was an equal sign. So I'm going to break it apart by grouping. Here I'll pull out an x squared, which leaves me with x plus 3. Here I'm going to pull out a negative 1, which leaves me with x plus 3. It gives me x plus 3, and then x squared minus 1. And this still factors, so I have x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1. And these are all still equal to 0. So I set each of those equal to 0. I get x plus 3 equal to 0, which gives me a negative 3. x plus 1 equal to 0, which gives me a negative 1. And x minus 1 equal to 0, which gives me a positive 1. So I want to put on my number line negative 3, negative 1, and 1. So I've cleaned up my screen a little bit and I've marked negative 3, negative 1, and 1 on my number line. And again, this breaks my number line up into pieces. So I'm going to start with this piece over here. I need to choose a number over there. Let's say negative 4. And I'm going to put that into my original problem to see if it makes a true statement. So on the left hand side I get negative 16, on the right hand side I get negative 1. Well negative 1 is bigger than negative 16, so I want to shade this part in. Now we'll look right here. So let's say I use negative 2. So again I plug that into my original problem. So on the left hand side, I get 4, and on the right hand side I get 1. So that's no, I would leave that blank. Then, I choose this middle piece, and let's say I do 0, because 0 is nice. 0 cubed plus 3 times 0 squared. This left side is 0, the right side is 3, so that's a yes. I'd want to shade this part right here. And then finally we need to choose something that's bigger than 1, so maybe 2. So 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared. 
and comparing it to 2 plus 3. On the right side I get 20, and I'm trying to see is that less than 5, or, yeah, less than 5, and of course the answer is no. So I would leave that part blank. Now that I've cleaned up my number line, I just need to write it in interval notation. So the first thing I see is this arrow to the left, so it would be a negative infinity, and then negative 3. Now when I put my dots on, I should have put in filled dots, because this has an equal sign below it, which would make it be a bracket. Then the next thing I get is the negative 1, and then 1. So here is my final answer.